So I'm going to talk about high cuisine, or to give it a spurious and uh, uh, mostly undeserved scientific veneer, experiments in ethnophytopharmacogastronomy. Uh, we're a team of four, two media people and two chefs. Um, I'm a freelance writer based in Amsterdam since 1989. Um, I moved over there to help start Wired magazine and uh, long story, ended up freelancing for quite a long time, uh, still doing that. Um, as all freelancers uh, do, uh, had to, uh, I write a lot of hack work and business and tech and design and fashion and what have you. But I really like once in a while to write about drugs. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, I was one of the editors on Soft Secrets UK. It was probably the only cannabis activist magazine to actually make any money. Um, and this is their sister magazine, High Life. Um, I was three times a judge in the High Life Cannabis Cup for the best marijuana grown in the Netherlands that year, but I don't remember much about it. Um, I'm an uh, anarcho-herbalist and forager, because if you're not, you're a fool. Um, the handsome guy on the left is a uh, photog Dutch photographer, Floris Leeuwenberg. Um, we've worked on and off together. We have independent careers, but we're good friends and we're kind of aligned on what we want to do. And this is meant to come later in the slides, but I realized after 25 years of working in, with a photographer, this is the only photo I have of him. Uh, and this is um, in Brazil with, at uh, Maestre Irineu's uh, grave. Um, Flores has also done a lot of iconic uh, work with drugs. Um, our first interesting story about consciousness was in about 1993 when we worked, did some um, investigation into optoacoustical opto brain entrainment. And uh, that was uh, quite fascinating. And a year later, I'd been working for work, doing some stories for Wired, and we did this story on Britain's uh, cyberdelic techno hippies and their plans to invade America, which was kind of fun. Um, and when I was checking to see if it was still online, I realized I've actually been airbrushed from history. It says wired staff, but it's me. Uh, the year after that, uh, Floris was living in a squatted village just outside Amsterdam. Uh, it had been occupied by um, anarchists and artists, and they had a fully intact church there. And um, when the first uh, Santo Daimi sessions in Europe were being done, this is where they were being held in the church. So he heard about it and got us an in. And they said, yes, you can write about it, but you obviously you have to do it to make sure that you're not going to freak out or something. So after a quick couple of hasty ceremonies in uh, Holland, we went out to um, Brazil for six weeks, um, self-financed. Um, like I said, we're not academics and we don't have any regular income. so. <laughs> I had to literally borrow the cash from my editor to go out there on the kitchen that I came back and wrote about it. And in 1995, um, we published this in The Independent. Um, as far as I know, it's the first mainstream coverage of ayahuasca in the UK. And um, yeah, that's still online, still with my byline. Um, this is us making some. That was uh, a very intense experience. And uh, on the way back, we stopped in for a Christmas Eve special with the Barquinho uh, group. So you don't really show with this light, but... Um, and some Umbanda, and some Candomblé. So, you know, we were interested in this kind of thing. And the year after that, um, we published a story on magic mushrooms. We worked as an underground therapists and shamans working in the Netherlands. Oh, and then, this is more recently, this is a... Uh, Mganga, a, a Kenyan witch doctor who we did a ceremony with. Well, he, he cured somebody, we paid for the chickens. Um, at the moment, the last few years, we've been running a vaporizer blog and review site from the very beginning of the technology to, to uh, <laughs> the most recent. Um, this is the herb. Oh, fuck. It's the herbalizer, built by former NASA space engineers. Very nice vape, very expensive, can't get it here yet. So uh, onto the stars of the show, uh, the chefs. This is uh, Noah, he's uh, half Jewish, half black, all highly functional stoner, born and raised in, uh, his words, um, born and raised in New York. He moved to Amsterdam 10 years ago, 
where he met Anthony, who's a landowner, uh, also moved over with his wife a few years back. He's been cooking since, he'd been watching his mum cook since he was three and wanted to be a chef, chef since the same age. Did a kind of traditional apprenticeship. And they run their own restaurants in Amsterdam. Um, here's a nice picture of them together. So about three years ago, a bunch of uh, nice ad people asked them if they would cook a psycho, uh, psychedelic dinner. They'd done something similar for a client the year before, although it was faked. And they thought it sounded really, like really good fun and they wanted someone to do it for them and their mates. So they commissioned uh, Tony uh, and, and Noah. Uh, Tony, by the way, doesn't take, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink. Oh, he has a, a beer when he's watching the, the, um, the mixed martial arts, but that's about the height of his <laughs> intoxication. But he's very aligned with what, we're, what we want to, want to do. And uh, they're the, kind of the yin and the yang of the kitchen and work very well together. So obviously, yeah, there's going to be cannabis. But it's been uh, it's already a well-established thing. Many, uh, many uh, recipe books and cookbooks and things have been uh, released, in, especially in the States, since uh, decriminalization. So they had their eyes set on uh, rather more interesting culinary experiences with uh, mushrooms <coughs> and Syrian roux, which is, seems to be the drug of the day around these parts. Uh, everyone talks about it. Um, pretty, uh, I was going to, but since you're all aware of it, so there being an MAO inhibitor, and, um, one interesting point is that a couple of years ago, the Grand Ayatollah, uh, the Shiite Ayatollah in Iran, declared that psychedelics were halal. So I think there's some really interesting possibilities for cultural exchange. Um, Canna, we were using from South Africa, which is a mild um, pick me up in small doses and a relaxant in larger doses. It's a uh, natural SSRI. And um, oh, I threw in some gratuitous blood porn. Um, so uh, Floris, by this stage, was living in uh, a fancy street in Amsterdam, on the same street as their uh, restaurant. And um, we'd asked them if they would try cooking with vaporizers, just sort of adding vapor, uh, uh, cannabis vapor to various meals. And so we heard about this project. And um, through the vaporizer site, we had worked with uh, Amsterdam's only independent cannabis testing center. So we thought we'd you know, really kind of dive into specific cannab uh, cannabises and hashishes at various parts of the dinner. So a high THC one at the beginning to kind of boost people up there and then a high THCV Moroccan hash at the end to kind of bring them down a little bit and, um, and not make them feel like going home and raiding the fridge. Um, so having chosen the dishes, um, the guys got to work. I think this was the tuna with smoked avocado and New York diesel. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all have breakfast. Um, this is their restaurant. Um, we ended up doing two dinners for 25. Mm. One was this one, uh, a kind of practice when we had them allow, people allow um, cameras in. And then the second, the, the week after that was the party for the ad guys. And uh, Went really well. Out of 50 people, I think we had three dropouts, which you'd probably lose more than that on a pub crawl. So uh, we weren't serving any alcohol, just uh, um, herb teas and things like that. It was an eight-course dinner, uh, small starter dishes. Uh, with, as I said, weed, cannabis, canna, Syrian roux, and um, truffles, magic, magic truffles, as the kind of <laughs> motor of the, uh, the, the, uh, the main piece of the, of the dinner. Um, the ad guys melted back to their day jobs after that, and we thought, well, shit, we've got all these recipes, we should really do something more with this. And um, obviously, we, you know, we thought about a crowdfunding a, uh, a cooking book. And as we talked more, we thought it would be really nice to actually go to the places where these herbs come from, so find out how the tribes in southern Africa use canna traditionally and what the fresh stuff is like, and ditto, you know, maybe going to Iran, cooking with, cooking with and for the Sufis and, and, and that sort of thing. And obviously, when you think of all the drugs and all the people around the world, there's many, many different ways you can slice that. I mean, you could do a whole series just in Mexico or, or in Brazil, but uh, it's kind of ambitious and not the sort of thing you can crowdfund, so we needed to start talking to TV companies. So we spent the rest of the summer putting together a kick-ass uh, pitch, uh, which we took to a four-letter youth-oriented um, online TV company. We said, oh, we love it, and we're going to send it to London, and they can look at it, and they loved it, and we're going to send it to LA, and they loved it, and then corporate got involved, and we didn't really hear anything for quite a few months. So uh, it was a bit frustrating. We thought, how, how are we going to push forward? And while we're thinking about it, I happened to be in London, and I managed to get a story in The Guardian, which got like 
eight and a half thousand shares and it got picked up and shared by other websites which was gratifying a nice proof of concept and, and that we had a thing here that was uh, interesting to people um, we also had a lot more drugs we wanted to uh, sorry herbs we wanted to uh, cook with we had a friend who had a coca, coca bush and this is some coca leaves and obviously um, chacruna a mock-up of a possible thingy. I mean, there are precedents for cooking with, uh, cooking and drinking with uh, these uh, herb, herbs of the gods, and um, we'd really like to try and regenerate that sort of thing with possibly, you know, psychedelic cocktails. And uh, so then, yeah, where, where am I now? Um, 2015. Yeah. So uh, 2016, we hadn't got any TV interest, so we thought we'll just go ahead and make a clip of our, what we'd like to do in our first episode. And uh, while we were doing that, the Transnational Institute had a meeting for drug producers from around the world. This is a Laotian uh, poppy farmer, and there were Jamaican ganja growers and um, um, coca, coca growers from, uh, came together before the big UN conference uh, last year to try to put their case forward that, um, I mean, for instance, in, in Laos, they have a very rich uh, medicinal and culinary tradition with opium poppies, leaves, roots, the whole lot, and which is, you know, completely unknown about. So um, we've got some nice contacts and we, you know, um, we had the ambition to go to some of these countries. Um, this is an article. Yeah, Floris was taking the photo as well. That's where, where we have the uh, inn. And this was, um, boom, don't need that. Other, other precedents, um, you know, most creatures seem to like having some sort of uh, altered consciousness occasionally. Other precedents. Uh, this was the Kew Gardens. Uh, a couple of years ago they had a big series on psychedelic plants. So there is a mainstream uh, interest even outside of uh, breaking convention, I think. so. Um, we made a website and, okay, here we're going to have first video. This is, this is the clip we made. My name is Noah. I love to cook and I love to get high. I worked in Michelin kitchens my whole career in New York, San Francisco, and Japan before landing in Amsterdam nine years ago, where I'm a chef and a co owner with Tony of a couple restaurants. I've cooked with weed and other natural drugs at home and with friends and used them like any other ingredient. They have a real flavor profile and aroma. They change when you cook them, just like any other herb. In Amsterdam, it all came together. Tony and I started to explore herbal history of Holland, from the forgotten plants of a medieval medicine garden to the modern cannabis culture. We visited Amsterdam coffee shops and talked to the lab that does quality control for them. They explained exactly what happens within the body and how we can trigger munchies or get somebody blasted out of their mind. At the warehouse of the city's oldest and best herbal suppliers, we picked out some candidates for a high cuisine dinner. We learned about the exotic spices, plants, and drugs from around the globe that first arrived here during Holland's Golden Age. Fucking crazy, I thought, only in Amsterdam. We put all this knowledge together and got to work. Finding the perfect balance between getting high and hot cuisine. After a couple test runs with friends, we found it. Our eight-course psychedelic tasting was a total blast. Everyone loved it and wanted more. Our team's now planning a revolutionary international high cuisine web series, along with a cookbook like no other. We can't wait to discover more herbs and use them like they've never been used before. So we thought we've got a website, we've got a clip, um, we've done about 100, N equals 130 uh, uh, diners and um, it was all going great. We need a press launch just to, uh, uh, for the Dutch press and I'd like to read this because I, uh, I just came across this a couple of weeks ago but it seemed to really apply to the, the, the atmosphere of what happened next. Uh, this is by Théophile Gautier in an article, uh, Le Club des Achichans, in the Revue des Demandes in February 1846 and it begins 
one December evening, obeying a mysterious summons, drafted in, in enigmatic terms, understood by affiliates but unintelligible for others. I arrived in a distant quarter, a sort of oasis of solitude in the middle of Paris that the river, surrounding it with two arms, seemed to defend against the encroachments of civilization. It was in an old house on the island of Saint Louis, <clears throat> the Hotel Pimodin, built by Lausanne, that the bizarre club of which I was a member recently held its monthly sittings where I was to attend for the first time. And we had a really cool place lined up. Um, it was a kind of design, bio design, RT Institute. They were doing aquaponics and growing their own herbs, and it seemed perfect. And then four days before they pulled out, or before dinner, they pulled out and went, well, what's in it for us? And we kind of panicked. And then they re offered it for 800 euros, and we told them to piss off. And eventually, well, not eventually, very quickly, we found a place through a girlfriend of a friend who was the, I'm not sure what the word is, but um, she was something to do with this uh, 15th century church. It was a monastery um, that was seized in the Reformation, and uh, this bit here was part of the East India Company, um, and the church um, is now called the Walloon, the Walloon Church of the Valsa uh, It's um, It was given to the Huguenots who came over in the 1600s. So uh, it seemed sort of appropriate. And um, as you can see, it was very formal and lovely, and everything went great. The end, thank you. Any questions? Um, no, no, wait. There's a guy with a camera at the back. Um, we didn't know who he was, and it turned out to be a nice guy, fortunately. Uh, he runs a website, uh, sorry, a YouTube channel called Controlled Substances. Substance. His name is Tice Roos. And unfortunately, he was there to catalogue the uh, disaster that the, uh, w um, happened. Um, that's, this is my impression of his impression, so it's for some reason. Very Holy fuck. It's in a church. Hello. Hey, good Hi. Hey. Hi. So, did, uh, for me. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah, some light would be nice. So let's see. Consumption of one dish containing medium dosage amounts of cannabis, canna, Syrian root, and truffles during the high cuisine tasting. Well, there we go. Risk, personal injury, yada yada yada. This is my entry bag. My entry. Oh, this, this is where it starts. Okay. Truffles. It's, ca it's canna. Okay. So that's 99% pure THC. So it's in a church. Okay, so this is the first course, I assume? This is a muse, please. Ah, yeah, nice. First course. I'm not going to do too much talking. No, 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 no. Okay, sure. so we gave the press, we had 16 press, and um, Noah no and Tony knew a woman that did, uh, ran a, P, a top PR agency, so we had Elle and Vogue and a national newspaper and some food bloggers. And um, our lawyers said the only real problem might possibly the, be the fact that we had all these drugs together in one go and we were giving them to people. So we divided them all up into 16 portions and got all the journalists to bring their own uh, uh, mushrooms and, um, and we combined them in the, in the kitchen. And uh, yeah, I mean, everyone laughs at uh, disclaimer forms, but <laughs> I'm so pleased we have one. Our goal and our main objective is tonight is fun. We're going to start uh, a, a number of things with this brand and uh, the first thing is going to be a show and we're going to be kind of taking this on the road and finding the origin of the drugs. So I swear I knew nothing about this pure THC that went in. Um, what happened was um, Chef thought it would be a good idea and we, we didn't go through the protocols of testing everything and uh, it went in and um, we had some quite uh, inexperienced, shall I say, um, drug users at the dinner. And I think it was a combination of uh, the high THC and the lack of experience that uh, led to a few dropouts, as you'll see. And um, hang on, when, when I can catch up. What I actually really love about this whole thing is that the food itself is actually actually extremely good as well. Yeah, with a crust of hemp seed, a little bit of um, silver haze, and some chives. And the jus is licorice or drop, Syrian rue extract, and underneath is fennel or vankel and some salsa. Room, but the, uh, 
what is that one? And I hear some people saying like, I'm not gonna yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Like, this is too much. This is too much. Was it the guy over here? Was he bailed out? No, that yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's 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 two that's two empty chairs. It's blasphemy. We're tripping in a church. I'm tripping for the first time in my life in a church. Do not use this in your little compilation. She's falling asleep. And she's already, she went from laughing a lot to falling asleep. It's quite fascinating. Maar eigenlijk meer zo'n tipzitter zoals dat heet. Ja, tipzitter. Tipzitter. Ik heb ja. zorgen dat alles goed gaat. Zorgen dat alles goed gaat. Maar holy fuck, oh kut. Het zijn allemaal mensen die voor de eerste keer aan het tippen zijn. Dat, dat is helemaal niet. Ja, jij bent dat niet Dat had ik helemaal niet, uh, niet, uh, niet door. Er is some juice. Ik denk ik ben in Amsterdam. I see people that are very, very pale. Ja, pale and just getting sick. And uh, I just saw that Thijs also got affected by the first course. So maybe I'm speaking too early and I will be. As pale as everyone, but <laughs> at this point, uh, no. But I'm 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 okay though. Like I'm okay. Yeah, you're, 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 you can you're, see who's yeah, okay and who's really like, But I'm, I'm on the edge of like poof. Oh fuck. Uh, really? I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty fucking high. Gewoon dat je op moment moet zijn. Beginnen gewoon. Shit is hier natuurlijk. Te shit en dan op het moment dat je gewoon. Oh, giants. Door de camera's te zijn, dan voelen ze mensen minder. Nee, daarom. I know. Dan just vanaf nu. I think at this point I popped out for a cigarette thinking everything was going fine when I came back. <laughs> Pandemonium is uh, starting. Absolutely, ding ding. Alleen ja, het heeft dan wel echt een merkelijke proef nodig. Dat is het ja. Vlak mij ook bijna op mijn tas gekocht. We are still standing after high cuisine. What was the name of it? High cuisine. High cuisine. High cuisine. Dude, I told you you want to get get in the counter. Yeah, roll in the counter. <laughs> Dude, let him get the other side. I saw some weird situations. Suddenly, like everything, like broke. All yes. social convention broke. <laughs> everything <laughs> broke. <laughs> yeah, you can see people's eyes start fading away. No, not not on our corner. There was no. it was still social for sure. They really have the greatest dinner I've ever been to. Yeah, it's uh, like was being like in a movie, basically. Um, I mean, of course, now I miss the shot of us all eating dessert while people around us are puking. Oh, I mean, yeah. yes, a whole table of people like us. I want to do it. I want to do a dinner again like that. It's just about the people. I, dude, like the setup I mean? is great, ingredients are great, flavors are great, everything is great on that dinner. Because you went all the way. I went all the way. And I was feeling great as the trip home was a bit hazy. I sent loads of people voice messages um, saying that I just came up with the best story ever and I was <laughs> going to write a book and it was going to be revolutionary. And um, weirdly afterwards when I listened to those voice messages again, um, the ideas were pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it wasn't that funny. It was pretty horrible for four hours watching these people uh, just kind of go pale. And um, we learned a lot, we, um, a lot uh, about set and setting and um, about not using pure THC on, uh, on um, yeah, ingenue drug takers. And they were saying, that, oh yeah, I had a couple of joints when I was at college and I once tried ecstasy. And I mean, it's just, we said right in the beginning, I mean, if this had happened with the first meal, we would never have continued. And um, we had said each time we sent out uh, letters to the press saying, you know, really don't come if you're not used to handling this kind of stuff. This is a lady from Vogue. She had a very quiet night, but she got back in touch a couple of weeks ago with me, saying she's still interested in herbs. She's just not using cannabis, uh, but more <laughs> calamus and um, uh, and a few other kind of lighter things. And I had to remind her that uh, the brain on marijuana will never deviate from its destined disposition nor be driven to madness. Marijuana's mirror reflecting. Man's dis deepest thoughts, a magnifying mirror. It's, it's true, but only ever a mirror. Um, so we spent a week kind of thinking, are we going to get run out of town? Are we going to get jailed? Um, but thankfully, Amsterdam is quite cool even about this. And then 
Even the, the, mayor, the parole newspaper was quite sweet, saying, yeah, it was my fault, I don't blame the chefs, and, and that sort of thing. And then a couple of weeks after that, we got a call from Spouten and Slicken. It's a Dutch um, harm reduction, entertaining harm reduction program about sex and drugs. It loosely translates as shooting up and swallowing. And it's, uh, it's quite eye-opening for, for a Brit, even though one that's lived there for a long time. And they said, we've seen, we've seen the thing, we want you to come and cook for our, cook for our uh, presenters for the last uh, episode of the season. And, um, but we have a few you know, uh, rules and regulations. So we explained what we were going to do, a four-course dinner, and you know, da 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 uh, And the night before, I got a phone call from the researcher saying, we've spoken to the Yellenek, which is like the government drugs clinic, and they say, you're insane. And, and we said, no, look, we know where we went wrong last time. It, we promise it's not going to happen again. So we really... <laughs> Suckers of punishment decided to go on national TV, and this was it. Na een fantastisch seizoen spuiten en slikken zijn we alweer aangekomen bij de laatste aflevering. En om dit drugs en seks overgrote seizoen goed af te sluiten, heb ik mijn lieve drugslabcollega's uitgenodigd voor een heel bijzonder. Deceptively angelic looking presenter. We are cooking a, a dinner with drugs for my colleagues. How did you come up with that? Um, so, first, maybe we don't say we're cooking with a dinner with drugs. No. I think the, the, a good stance is to kind of say that we're using medicinal herbs that are in Amsterdam right now. Yeah. Sorry, so I'm trying, I was trying it's to medicinal medicinal fast yeah, forward to the end of this right? bit. But. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're chefs, so we see things as an ingredient. But how did you come up with that? When you do these type of, of, of seeds or medicinal... So, <clears throat> what have we learned in the two and a half years? Uh, we haven't learned how to use uh, PowerPoint, obviously. Uh, it works. I mean, that was the most amazing thing. Um, you don't have to take drugs on an empty stomach. In fact, we found fats and, and some, having something meaty actually helped settle the stomach. And you can uh, add different drugs on top of each other, more like a symphony of energy. So, you know, if you had a, a bassoon and a violin and a piano, they work nicely. Um, I think a lot of the uh, scare stories about natural SSRIs and MAOI, MAOIs are extrapolated from pharmaceuticals, which isn't really fair. Um, it's more like kind of adding a, a road drill to a, to a, heart, to a thing and to an um, orchestra. Um, in Noah's words, it's not for chumps, and we said that at the beginning. Um, we really, uh, it's very polarizing. The people who have experienced seem to love it. The ones aren't, it's touch and go. Uh, yeah, herbs means herbs, so no oils and concentrates. Um, set and setting, when you're doing something like that, you've got to think like, how are you going to get these people home? And when we were like having to order taxis and even take them home personally uh, when they weren't in a fit state. And the temperature of the church got really cold, which made the, you know, their negative paranoia worse. Um, things like that. We had two stairways, so we couldn't keep a track where everyone was. So someone had gone out for a cigarette and someone else was kind of sprawled on the stairs. And, it was uh, a bloody nightmare. Um, yeah, no one likes cameras, although the clip um, with some professionals that I had to skip, they obviously were fine on camera and they had a, in short, we might, we really, really careful. We had 0.1 gram of, a, of, a, of hashish in the first thing. They had a four courses, uh, one tenth of, a, I mean, almost a mic, slightly above microdose. Um, yeah, in fact, that's where we're trying to position ourselves, really, in between microdosing and macrodosing, in the kind of healthy eating and yoga kind of scene. But it's very scalable uh, in, in uh, dosage and intent. Um, I mentioned the Kalindi burger. I'm trying to get 30 grams of uh, dried. Um, there's a whole world of drugs out there that we want to go explore. It's a new way of dining, uh, both for the diners and for the chefs. It really changes the way you react with, uh, interact with your food. And... Um, it's a new way of getting high. Instead of doing a bump in a toilet or taking a pill at home and going out, you spend four hours on a journey, and it's, um, it's really nice. So thank you very much.